times x times uh, give you negative four x. Yes, it does. Negative four times three gives you negative twelve. Okay. Yep. Now it's 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 really double factoring because you're you're going to factor again. These both have x plus three in them. All right. So you 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 factor those out. You get x plus three, and then what's left over? The three x minus the four. Yep. Now I have not done a good job of setting this equal to zero. I'm going to catch up here. You are solving, okay? Which means that at the end, you're going to get a... Oh, do I set these both to zero? Yes, exactly. And so just, just factoring okay. isn't enough. You have to actually solve these. And okay. uh, you can give me the answers whenever you, uh, whenever you got them. That's, that's what I was having trouble in in class was because I kept writing my answer as a factor. Right. And, and so the, the factoring is correct, but they're asking you to solve. Okay. And and so the, what they're looking for is x equals a number, x yeah. equals a number as your final answer. What what would that be? So for the first one, I add four and then divide by three, right? That's correct. So then four thirds. Four thirds. How about the one on the left? Negative three. Negative three. Good. And that's the final answer. Yes. Okay. Okay, so uh, I've got a bunch here that we can work on. Um, okay. So let's do another one. We'll work okay. through this one together and we'll. Uh, Cause I think I sent you a picture of the homework or did I, I type not, in the I, I did like not, wrong? I did not get anything, uh, no pictures have come through. So if you wanna try resending that, um, yeah, that's up to you. Otherwise I'll, I'll yeah. You can also drop it in the chat, whatever's easy uh, for you. Um, it is uh, a lot of students okay. just re reply to the booking email if you've got that. Yeah, yeah. I think I have that. Um, and apply. If you want to verbally tell me a problem while that's coming through, uh, we can get started on another. Yeah, uh, x squared minus 6x equals negative 9. Like this? Yeah. Okay, good. Now, this is this one's uh, this one is a little it's this one's different than the previous one. So do you want us to just work on this type of problem? Um, and once that picture comes through, I, I tend to group them up like we'll do all the ones of a certain type together. Okay, because um, there's like a bunch of different kinds on here. Yeah, and that's what this one is. So for, first first of all here, you always want to get this thing to equal zero. Like just like in the previous problem, so you're going to add nine to both sides, okay? Okay, I think I just sent it. Okay, take a look here. So, so let me just review kind of like the order in which you're looking for factors. The first is always the greatest common factor. The second might be difference of squares. That has two terms in it. The third is what's called a perfect square trinomial. And that's what we're looking at here. Perfect square trinomial. Oh, now, how X plus three. Well, close, very close here. So you do have to take the square root of the first one, the square root of the last one. And then your sign comes from, from this middle one here. Oh, and then square it. Yes. All right, let me let me check here. Maybe it maybe it went somewhere I didn't expect. Nope, not seeing it yet. Okay. Yeah. Now we're not done though, because we are solving. Okay. Okay. But but just to be clear here, the perfect square trinomial, it has two forms. One form is x um well, I'll get to that in a, another time. The 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 thing here is the minus plus the minus produces this minus here, and we can talk about why. But you have to set you're really setting x minus three. And x minus three, they're they're your best. You're really setting them both equal to zero. And you, you may ask, well, why would I do that? The graph of this touches the axis at three. I don't know if you've gotten to that yet, um, and, and another, maybe another part of the course. But the solution is where it where it hits or touches the graph. And so this one actually touches 
at three. It's called a double root. Oh, okay. So I think I understand. Yes. So it'll so it's it'll touch it three, and uh, it, that's the it's one solution for two sets of equations. It's 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 a it's called a double root, uh, meaning that. You say, you give it twice, or you just say once and double root, or it's implied that it's a double root. Um, th there's a little bit more that's going on, but um, yeah, we can we can go with that. So okay. I, I, your pictures did come through. Thank you for sending those. That that really okay. does help here. Um, we should do number two next. It's a lot like this one. Okay. Um, and and so when you send over the assignment like you just did, I, what I can do is group them together and say, all right, let's do these together that way you're, we're doing ones that are like like that okay okay so like i mentioned in the previous problem you you always want this thing to equal zero when you're solving okay. a quadratic you always make it equal to zero so you're going to add 64 Two. to both sides okay and and there's that and then there's that like running list okay it's like well what is it is it a greatest common factor is it a difference of squares is it a perfect square trinomial now I can tell you what this is, but I'm I'm looking at it and saying, all right, can I take the square root of the first one? Can I take the square root of the last one? And then, and then, and then double it. Is it is it this one? Yes, it is. But it's but it's negative, so you have to yeah, account for so that. X minus eight squared, and then so then the answer solution would be eight eight. Right, x equals eight, or you can say eight, and it's a double root. You're in an honors class, so I think it's good to give to be more explicit um, okay. when you're when you're giving your answer. Um, okay, so let's look at number three. Number three is very much like the one that we started with. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna do that. Um, you know, how how does math you know that? Um, well, I, I go through this list just like I want you to. It's like, all right, it's not, it's not this, not this, not this. Oh, it's it's got a number in front of x that is not equal to one. Okay. That that's what I'm looking for. I'm like, oh, that's not one. And yeah. it's not a greatest common factor. So that tells me that you're going to combine six and minus two. which is okay. negative 12. So now uh, you're gonna, you can make the full list. Like I love making the full list. I think it's important to do, but you don't have to do that. You just need to come up with two numbers that multiply to minus 12, but add up to positive one. So it's the diamond basically, but- Yeah, it's the diamond. I guess that's what they do in here. I, you know, I don't, I don't really teach it that way. And, and if you want that, I'd have to go look that up, but you, it's, it, and you probably already know the answer. Like. What are two numbers that multiply to negative 12, but add up to positive as positive one? Um, and that's where this list, you know, if you- if Oh, you're, it's um, four and negative three. Yes. So I would get down here uh, like that. Yeah. So you break apart the one X into minus 3x plus 4x. And then you bring the other two terms down. So then 6x squared minus 3x plus 4x minus 2. Yeah, and you look zero. at the first you look at the first two and hopefully you see the greatest common factor bet between them. Yeah, so 3x times x minus it's 2x. Oh, 2x, because, yeah. Yep. Minus what goes in the next position? 1. Good. And then you immediately rewrite what's in parentheses off to the right. And you really hope you've done it right. Um, and most of the time these work out. But you, you have to figure it 2. Yeah, plus 2. Always yeah. include the operator. So then you, you have to factor again. It's 2x minus 1. And then what's left over? 3x plus 2. 3x plus 2. Very good. And then set both of those equal to zero. Exactly. And then 
add one divided by or add subtract two and negative two divided by three x equals negative two thirds for the first one. Yep. And x equals one half. Now I'm curious, did you write the three x plus two to the left of the two x minus one? Yeah. Okay. Good. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Um, so the more math you do, the more you get to do, kind of choose your path. We'll come back to four, I promise, um, or, or at least tell you, give you some tips if we don't have enough time to get through all of them. But let's go to number five, because five is very much like what we've been doing. And I think like number you did... five is the one we started with. The... Oh, it is. It is. Yeah. So let's do six, and okay. then we'll come back to four. All right, so when I look at six, so again, sorry, good. It's not, it's A is not equal to one. Right. So you have to split the seven. Exactly. And uh, you, you get, you figure out how to do that by taking the two and the minus 15 yeah. and multiplying the, them. Negative 30 X squared. So what multiplies to negative 30 and adds to seven? Positive X. seven, yeah. Um, excuse me. Oh, All is right. it, um, no, it's not, uh, it's in this list. I, I don't know if you're seeing my screen or looking up, but oh. um, um, I, I always write the full list. Oh, 10 and negative three. Right. And it's easy to see when it's the full list, right? You just, you just yeah. sit there and count. It's harder when you're just kind of making up things and saying, well, I think that works or oh, it didn't work. I would strongly yeah. urge you to make this, but, um, but that's totally up to you. So now do you want to go 10x minus 3x or 3x minus 10x? Um, 10x minus 3x. Okay. And and just again, a full disclosure, the order does not matter, but there is a, you, you know, sometimes you see it a certain way and you're like, all right, let me, let me do that. Yeah. All right. So but it's just easier to find the greatest common factor between three and 15. Yes. Between two and three. Yes. So I want you to work the problem from here. Okay. And uh, if you have questions, please ask. Uh, but that, uh, let me know what you come up with here. Okay. Um, so I got X equals three halves and X equals negative five. Very good. All right. So the hardest part really is, is what's off to the right here. I think once you've done a few of these, uh, it's just coming up with this list because the list grows as, as the number gets larger. So let's, so give you an example of that here in uh, number seven. Okay. So number seven, uh, you have to get the numbers on the same side of the equation. You want this to equal zero, all the terms on one side. So you subtract 60, 4x squared plus x minus 60 equals zero. This time, though, when you multiply four times negative 60, that's a pretty large number. Yeah. So the, the approach I was showing you where you make this huge list it's good in principle because you will get everything, but it's bad because like we know that the answers are one apart. Yeah. Okay. So like, like, wow, this is wrong. 10 times 11, they're one apart. Okay. But yeah. that's the, that's kind of the way you want to do this um, to, to figure out, you know, the right answer here. Okay. Um, now, are you allowed to use a calculator in this course at all? Yes. 
Okay. So, you know, you, you, if you want to grab a calculator and take 240 and sit there and start dividing it, you know, you'll, you'll find that like 12 and 20 work. Okay. Okay. But that's not the right answer because they're too far apart. Yeah. Okay. So just like divide it by like one or two. Well, I don't, since, since we know they're one apart, you don't need to give the huge list. But what I was trying to show you is I know that 12 and 20 work, but they're more than one apart. Yeah. So you could take 240 and divide it by like 13. You'll find that that does not work. 14 does not work. But eventually you will get a number that does work. 16. And, are, and they're one apart. Now, yeah. which one's positive and which one's negative? So the 16 is positive and the 15 is negative. Good. So we, we break this apart into 16x minus 15x. x squared plus 16x minus 15x minus 60. 4x minus x plus 4. x plus 4 inside. And multiply by negative 15. 4x minus 15 times x plus 0, 0, um, plus 15, 15 divided by 15 fourths, and negative 4. So I got x equals 15 fourths and negative 4. Good, very good. All right, uh, so let me just make a comment on, um, let's see, sorry, let me just get back to the right, right. Uh, so we did, we did that one, that one. Uh, so eight, uh, we won't do eight, but eight is like, or maybe we've already done eight. No, we did, we did five. Eight is just like the ones we've been doing. Um, let's, let's look at number 13 together. Okay. And then uh, kind of transition to another type of factoring. So again, what I what I what you want to do is get that 14 to the other side. Doesn't matter what type it is. You you almost always do this. Um, equals zero. This is uh, what did I say? A. 13. Now uh, a not equal to one. Okay, no yep. common factor. So you're sitting there. You're like, all right, I got to multiply 15 times minus 14. Yep. Okay, what is the uh, what is that multiplied to? Negative two hundred ten. Negative two ten. So now this was a little more challenging. You got two numbers that multiply to negative two ten, but are twenty nine apart. So that's where it gets a little harder. It's like when do you know, twenty nine apart? What could that be? Um, now, like for example, like I know three and seventy work, but they're not quite they're not quite 29 apart. Yeah. And seven and 30 work, but they're 23 apart. So maybe it's something else in between those. You see how we've sort of squeezed it between yeah. those two? Eight and 30 almost work. Well, eight and 30 is too large. It's got to oh. multiply to 210. So what I'm trying to show you is that three times 70 is is that's that's 67 apart 7 and 30 are 23 apart we want oh, 29 so apart so it's got to be in the middle it's got to be somehow squeezed in the middle here oh well, maybe four okay let's so take 210 and divide it by four that's a mixed number okay so you can't use that what else 42 and five no Okay, so how far apart are they? Two, um, the five. They're, they're, yeah, they're so forty-two and five are are yeah. thirty-seven apart. It's six and thirty-five. There you go. There you go. Okay, so you kind of got to make an initial guess, guess, and then squeeze yeah. it until you you get the uh, get the right answer. So is it positive six or negative six? What's the 
negative six, positive 35. Okay, so do you want the 35 to come first or the six to come first, negative six to come first? Um, the negative six to come first. Okay. All right, why don't you finish it off from here? Okay. Do you have a final answer for me? Um, two fifths and negative seven thirds. Good. Yeah, if, if I uh, if you work on a problem out on your own, uh, just whenever you're done, you know, just throw out the answers or, um, okay. you know, give me some indication because obviously I can't see what you're doing, what you're doing. <laughs> but that's great. You're doing really well. All right, let's talk. We're gonna go back and look at four. Um, four is one of these. Four? Yeah, okay. four is a it's um it's it's a disguised problem, okay? Because you might look at it, and, and the way the brain works is like if you do like two or three problems in a row of one type, you just look at this and you're like, all right, twelve times minus eighteen, here we go, one two three go, right? And that's completely wrong. You always always yeah. always look for a GC. Greatest common factor. Yeah, and I I can't stress that enough because you it will save you energy that you don't need to spend on a test. Um, you can still use the 12 times minus 18, but <clears throat> you should factor out the GCF first. Yeah. Okay. Now, unfortunately, you, you didn't GCF. The GF, GCF isn't 12, so you do have to do the 4 times minus 6. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's but it's better. It's better mm -hmm. than doing, um, you know, 12 times minus 18. Okay. Um, so let's let's not do any more work on this problem. Uh, this is at least enough for you to get started here. I want to tackle, make sure we tackle everything. The lessons are 50 minutes, so I want to make sure we get through the other types of problems that I'm seeing on here. Okay. Um, so I want to move to number nine. Number Next. nine. Yep. Yes. And uh, it's kind of like the one we just did. What do you see when you look at number nine? Uh, three is the greatest, greatest common factor. Anything else? So the, the GCF can be a number, it can be both a variable, 3x, 3x. or it can be both, yeah. So it's a 3x times x minus, minus four, 4 equals 0, yes. And then 3x equals 0, and then x minus 4 equals 0? Exactly, exactly. Now, what, one little wrinkle here is the reason you set 3x equal to 0 is because it has an x in it. You set x terms equal to 0. Not just anything, it has to have an X in it, X terms. Okay, so right. if it doesn't have an X, you can't set it to zero? That's right. And you sometimes see that, or see students trying to do that, um, if you're, you know, maybe look at your friend's work, but don't do that. Don't be, don't be that student. Um, so you're solving each of these. Let me know what you come up with. Um, I got four and zero. X is zero, X is four, yeah. Now, does your teacher ever want you to check your work or check your answers, like on a test? Um she recommends it so for... this is doable right like putting zero yeah. back in for x what about negative seven thirds it's doable but it may not be worth the time if you're not done with the test good good answer yeah it it really it's better it's almost better to rework the problem fresh than to try to check this um, because it just it you will get frustrated <laughs> All right, um, very good. So can you try number 11 on your own? It's very much like number nine. Okay. And uh, just let me know your final answer whenever you've got that. 
Negative 6x. Actually, I, I do need to tell me your GCF first. Negative 6x. Very good. Yeah. Go ahead and uh, work that out, please. X plus 6 equals 0. Negative 6x equals 0. Plus 6 equals 0. X equals 0. X equals 0 and X equals negative 6. Yeah. So negative 6x. X minus six equals zero, X equals zero, X equals six. So notice the GCF problems, they tend to have X in every term. Yeah. And that's, so identification is really key when you're doing this on a test or a quiz. You have to be able to like, you don't want to try them, try the methods. You want to know which one's going to work so that your 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 time is, is uh, most valuable, used most valuably. Are they right. most likely going to be two terms? If for GCFs, um, no, yeah. no, because um, they can. So it's a good question. Because like, let's look at. I'm going to modify twelve with it. I'm going to add a GCF to twelve. Okay. So here's how I modify twelve. Uh, x cubed minus seven x squared plus twelve x equals zero. You should always look for a GCF. X. X. Factor that out x squared minus 7x plus 12 equals 0. And now, now you have to multiply because there's well, nothing else. Well, you can do something with the inside here. This is okay. a different type of factoring. So factoring, like the way you've been shown factoring is like, here's a factoring, here's a factoring, here's a factoring, here's a factoring. And then what they can do is they can start overlapping them. And you have to know what to look for. So you probably see that pretty pretty soon here. Uh, but like in this problem, you have to now factor x squared minus 7x plus 12. You have to know what this type is. And, and can you tell me, do you, does this one look at all familiar to you? Um, x is equal to 1. A is equal to 1, yep. Yeah. So, so you find two numbers that multiply to 12, but add to? Negative 7. So then yes. negative 4 and negative 3. Good. So x minus 4, x minus 3, yeah. Right, but you can't forget to bring this last little x down. Yeah. Okay, at least, you know, I'm modifying 12. Don't don't put this down, especially yeah. if it's great. <laughs> the but way you... they taught us to do that one in class was to multiply 12 times uh, x cubed and then put the negative 7 at the bottom. Like, okay. and then um, he's like the, what, a, like a factor square, I think. Yeah, I, I don't like that approach because the GCF reduces the complexity of the problem. Okay. Like cubes are hard, squares, we know how to solve all of them. Okay. And uh, uh, I'll just take your word for it, but I, I would I would really, you know, look back at your notes and see if it was really one where they're, because if you can factor an X out, you do it. I mean, it's it's it makes it so much easier. And that's... That's my recommendation. Always, always, always look for a GCF. Okay. And standardized testing, they they throw in a GCF to a problem, and that's if you know that, it's much simpler because you it saves your save you computation time. Okay. So there's four solutions to this. Zero, three, and four. At least the one I I made up here. Uh, the one for for you, you know, is just just these. So it's just just these two answers. And that, that okay. regard. Okay, so you, you started by asking, like, is the GCF always two terms? No, two terms is generally difference of squares. Okay, okay so, so let's look at 10. Difference of squares. And these oh, all have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's x minus 5 times x plus 5, right? Right. Now, these always have two terms. And you, already, you already gave me the answer. Um, so you get x minus 5 x plus five, that's the factor, but what is the solution to solving this? Um, x equals five and x equals negative five. Yes. All right, so let's look at 14 next. Right. You always wanna move the constant or whatever's on the right to the left, move everything left or, or get everything on one side. So this would be 16 X squared minus 49 equals zero, two terms. 
and can you, you should... take the square root of 40 because it's a negative 49? So difference of squares, the answer to your question is, is you have to figure out what square gets you back to 49. The, the fact that seven. it's negative is not important. Yeah, this is seven squared. To get to 16 is a four. And oh, to get so, to, it, so the sign, it doesn't matter when it's... No, that's right. Okay. Okay. There, there, there are what are called prime or non-factorable problems. Um, Maybe you've okay. seen those in class. I hold off on showing exceptions until we've really got all this down because it just dilutes what we're doing. But you have to know that A is 4X and B is 7. Okay. So it's, is the answer 4X minus 7 times 4X plus 7? Well, kind of. Yeah, that's well, the yeah, factor. But yeah, that, yes, yes, that's the yes. fact. Yeah. Um, and then plus 7, so then X equals seven fourths and then x equals negative seven fourths yes now there's kind of another way to do it where you keep it as is let me let me re, let me reframe the question there there is another way to do this um but i would discourage you from doing this you you divide both sides by 16 so you have x squared equals 49 over 16 and then to undo a square you take a square root yeah you have to remember though it's plus or minus. Very easy to miss, miss that one. And then you have to know to take the square root of the top, the square root of the bottom. And this is your final answer. Okay. Well, the first way we did it sounds just more easy. Yeah, the this way is right, but it, it only works on these problems. You're gonna get more complicated problems. Okay, so we got we got time left. We might as well go do the ones we haven't done yet, which I'm not even sure which ones we have not. Um, number maybe maybe four we didn't finish. Four and number eight. Okay, so let's go back to four. And uh, I, I we started with the GCF. And I'll, I'll, I'll uh, summarize a few things here. So it's four times minus six is minus 24. And you're looking for something that's five apart. Um, mm. uh... Oh, three and eight. Right. Now, when, just to be clear, when I say five apart, I'm not I'm not paying attention to the sign. Um, oh, OK. Uh, and, and maybe that was unclear because because I know I know that I just have to manipulate one number or the other. You know, it's either yeah. negative three or negative eight, but five apart. So in this case, it's negative three, positive eight. Yeah. Twelve uh, X squared minus three X. Why don't you do the eight X? I think you'll be more comfortable. Oh, with that. yeah. Plus eight x. Yeah. Now you you're supposed to bring the three down each time. Just just don't forget it. That's the, probably the main thing yeah. you might see. And so, what is the common factor between four x squared and eight x? Uh, four uh, x. Four x. And move the x plus two, and then x. So then times negative three. Yes. Four X minus three times X plus two. Four X minus three equals zero, X minus two equals zero. Then. So why don't we set the three equal to zero? Uh, because isn't it like just the greatest common factor? It is. It it the the correct the full answer is that it it doesn't have an x term in it. It's just a, it's just a coefficient. Oh, okay. You can actually divide it out and it goes away. So do you? Um, so do you include the three in your answer? No. Or is it just there? It it does not affect the answer. And let me. I'll show you that. I'll show you that here after you get your answers. Um, okay. 
x equals 3 divided by 4. Uh, so then I got x equals 3 fourths and x equals 2. Negative 2. Is it negative? Oh, yeah, it's a plus. Yes. Okay, so, to, so like, let's just say we didn't do this greatest common factor first. One of our factors might have been 9x minus, I'm sorry, 12x minus 9. And when you set that equal to zero, you add nine to both sides, and then you divide by 12. What is nine divided by 12? Three over four. Okay, and let's just say we, we got it with the other one, like we didn't do this, we, we found out there was three X plus six. Subtract six from both sides, divide by three. You get the same answer. So the point is, the point is that the reason you pull out the GCF is it makes the rest of the problem easier. It does not change the answer. Okay. 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 Right, let's let's do uh, uh, eight. I guess we've not done eight. We yeah. have plenty of time here, so let's make sure we knock that out. And okay. I'll spend some time summarizing some of the things you've seen. Okay. So minus fifteen. 3x squared plus 4x minus 15 equals zero. Good. And uh, see, see if you can work this one out on your own. And uh, just okay. let me know when you've got your final answer for it, please. Okay. Negative 45 x squared is just four parts. Two numbers are multiplied into 45 for two numbers. Nine and five, so nine and negative five. Three x squared minus nine x plus five x minus fifteen equals zero. And then three x minus x minus three x minus three five. Three x plus five times x plus three. Right. So then x is equal to 3 and x is equal to negative 5. Right. x is equal to 3 and x equals negative 5 thirds. Yes. Right. Very good. Um, so I really like that you're talking out loud. Um, I don't know if you if you're doing that for my benefit or if that's how you normally do it, but I think that's a great strategy. Um, I do it myself when I'm working on problems because it's just helps me to echo what I'm, what I'm seeing, but yeah, that's, uh, that's perfect. So have we, have we finished everything on your assignment here? Yeah. Great. Okay. So th I've been wanting to do this for a while, but I really want to just go through the factoring, the, the order, uh, the things you look for. Okay. So we've talked to, at, you know, over and over again, greatest common factor. You always look for that first. Okay. The second thing you look for is difference of squares. Okay. Now, generally, generally it's two terms. There are a few ways to disguise it, but it's generally two terms with a subtraction. It's got to be difference. Okay. The next type of factoring you usually see are what are called perfect square trinomials. And actually, let me back up here. Let me give you the formulas here um, for a difference of squares. Even though, even though we've, we've already done it, but you got it in your notes here. A squared minus B squared becomes A minus B, A plus B, right? Now there, there's, there's two types of perfect square trinomials that you'll see, okay? The first is what I call plus plus. It's A squared plus two AB plus B squared. Okay, and if, if we need an example, we, we've already done a couple tonight, but it'd be like X squared, plus 12x plus 36. And the plus plus refers to these two here. Okay. The next one is minus plus. A squared, and actually I need to give you, sorry about that, I need to give you the factored form of these. This always becomes A plus B squared like that. So this would become X plus six squared. The minus plus is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Minus plus referring to the minus and then the plus. This becomes a minus b squared like that. 
Uh, we'll make this one a little bit uh, harder. Let's say four X squared. Uh, and then last one here will go uh, plus uh, 81 Y squared, nine Y plus 36 X Y, something like this. Uh, this is just an example. Don't, don't get too caught up in this. Okay. Sorry, that's, that's supposed to be a minus. We can look at it later. The, the point is this is the progression that you go down when you're when you're working on this, okay? Like GCF, okay, it's got an X and everything. It's got a number and everything, difference of squares. Then it's perfect square trinomials, okay? okay. Then four is the A equals ones. So there's just like a list that you go down. Yeah. And... Now you, are, you already do this. Like when you play sports, um, you actually already do this. You just don't write it out formally. Like when you're playing, what position do you play in soccer? Uh, wing. Wing. Okay. So you, you know, like, okay, the ball might come at me, or if I get the ball, I do this. If the, if the defender's on my left, I go right. Or if it's on my right, I go left. Y you already do this intuitively. And so we're just formalizing this, but, but as a, as a, as a good math student, as an honors math student, you have to know the progressions. You have to know, like, this is easy, a little harder, a little harder, and so on. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the A equals one is the is the the two numbers multiply to C add to B. Okay. Okay. So it's the so it'd be like X squared times C is equal. Yeah, I give you add it up has it, to be BX. Yeah, this is this is an example. The yeah. one there is really key. And then okay. and then what I think what you really wanted help with, which is what we covered tonight, is the A not equal to one. Yeah. AX squared plus BX plus C. And and these are the, all the ones that we did tonight. These are the ones where you have to take A times C and then you break it apart in the triangle. Yeah. Now there there are more than this. But this is a good, I mean, if you if you could do this, like if I could throw up a problem and I'd like, well, do, do it really quick here. We're running out of time. But if I okay. threw up a problem. Like I would want to know, you know, this the the guy the idea is like, can you immediately tell me, you know, what it is? And uh, you know, I'll just throw one up here. We don't have to solve it, but what what type of factoring is this? Looks like a perfect square trinomial. Yeah, and I believe it is. Okay. okay. Uh how about how about this one? 16x squared minus 40x minus it's 24. Does the equal to zero have to do anything with the perfect square trinomial? Yes, like, you, they can all be equal to zero. Okay, sorry, so sorry. it doesn't that, really matter whether it's equal to zero or not? No, so in okay. terms of your factoring, yeah, good question, because I, I didn't say that explicitly. Like, the factoring just refers to the left side. Okay, the so solving, anything on the right side of the equal sign doesn't really matter in determining what kind it is? No, but it, like, it could be disguised, you know, like like if I put... If I put, let me let me rewrite this one. These are good questions. It, it, I'd love for you to ask more of these in the future. If I wrote this, 4x squared plus 16x plus 11 equals minus 5, you have to get this number on the left before you can decide what kind this is. Yeah, so then it would be, it'd still be a perfect square trinomial. Exactly. Because you're if, adding 5. But if you didn't know, and you, know, you just said, oh, I'm going to multiply 4 times 11, you're going to go down the wrong path. Yeah. Well, it'll just... It, you should get the right answer. It'll just take you a lot longer. You, you. So, just I, I hate to correct you, but the, the, what you said would would not work because you can't deal with this number. You, you would end up having to reincorporate this number into the solution. Like, let's just say you could actually factor this. You don't set them equal to negative five. You have to bring this number back over. Oh, so you can't have anything but zero on the right side? Exactly. It just doesn't yes. work? Yes, yes. All the nice properties of algebra don't work. Um, okay. Real quick here, this one on the left here, um, what do you see as the being the... Uh, uh, greatest common factor? Yeah, so it's four, uh, four x squared minus 10x minus six. But then you realize, oh, I could actually factor out a little bit more. And you say, oh, it's really eight. Oh, it's eight. Yeah. Yep. Two X squared minus five X minus three. And then from here, you use the A not equal to one yeah. approach. So I'm going to uh, stop recording here.